Yo, what's going down, everybody? It is straight out of Boston here, aka the King of Boston, and today we're back with episode 36 of the Detroit Pistons Association. And as you can see, Shabazz Muhammad has become fed up with the team right now. He is not getting the minutes he wants to. It's clear that he is not accepting his role as the sixth man he wants to start. So we definitely have to start looking at trade options for Iman Shumpert. So here are some of the options when I put him through the trade finder. Let me know what you think. A couple of the offers that stood out to me, Marshawn Brooks, Gerald Green, and you'll see Terrence Ross right there. Three straight offers of guys that would be nice shooting guards off the bench. Even Alexi Chavez, but I I think Chavez might be more of a starter type. Um, but anyway, let me know what you thought of those three moves there, uh, if you liked any of those. And as you're going to see, we are going up against the Charlotte Bobcats. And the Bobcats are a very interesting team. They're not the old Bobcats that we've uh, grown to, to know and <laughs> kind of make fun of sometimes. This this is a team that is Greg Monroe, who we traded for in our one of our salary dump trades in the offseason. They also have Tim Duncan, who is coming off their bench, and George Call as their head coach. So this is a very, very improved Bobcats team. They're rated than a 93 team overall. So this should be a very tough matchup. Um, this team is 27, or the Pistons, when I say this team, I mean. Uh, the Pistons are 27-8 and going into this game, and uh, I have not lost playing with them yet, so this is going to be a very interesting game. And, um, yeah, so that's really hard to say on in terms of the, the team that we're playing. So as you're going to see, uh, Dwight Howard is going to win this tip. And uh, Robinson's going to get the ball night with it up top, and we're going to get right into this gameplay. So here goes Brandon Rush down to the lane, dishes it off to Greg Monroe for the two, and uh, Carmelo Anthony's going to get the shooting foul there. That's going to be an and one. Speaking of Carmelo Anthony, I was actually, uh, I'm reading this book. It's called, like, the, the Book of Basketball, according to Bill Simmons. Bill Simmons is one of my favorite sports writers. Look at the nice, sexy layup right there by Melo. Let's take another look at this one quickly. Look at that. Scoops, and then goes up and kind of under... Kind of like MJ, almost. Not not quite to the uh, extent that MJ did his little move from. But um, anyway, back to Melo. So I was reading the, the Melo book, and a lot of people mentioned in the comments, um, you know, when, when I signed Carmelo Anthony, uh, I finally got Melo back to the place where he should have been drafted all along. And I'm reading that, that book, and it has... Uh, <laughs> Simmons is so funny. He has the uh, 33 biggest what-ifs in NBA history, and I think number 20-something was what if uh, Melo got drafted number two overall instead of Darko Milicic. And I actually talked about how... That would have been a terrible move for the Pistons. Even though Melo turned out to be the better pro, um, it would have caused a conflict with Tayshaun Prince, and uh, Tayshaun Prince would have lost his confidence. Uh, they probably would have dealt him away for 10 cents on the dime, and um, then the kind of Billups, and they, they never would have gone after Rasheed Wallace either, uh, because was it? I forget what it was, but um, them drafting Darko ended up ended them leading ended up leading them to go after Rasheed Wallace, and so that that core would have never really came together. And it's very interesting. And also talked about how uh, Carmelo Anthony had a very bad relationship with then head coach Larry Brown, and um, how that they, they were not the two fondest of each other in the 2004 Olympics. So I thought that was pretty interesting. Um, you guys should definitely go check out that book. It's kind of a big book, so um, some of you younger guys. Uh, I, you know, I don't know if, if you'd want to read it. It's like 700, 800 pages. But I'm, I know you, a lot of you guys are probably uh, more better better readers than I am, quite frankly. But uh, anyway, Mello for three right there. He's going to get that one to go. So anyway, you, you guys, if you're really interested in basketball, if you really like basketball, if you want to learn a lot about the game that you can't find out looking at a stat sheet, you should definitely go read that book. Uh, it's very interesting. It's given me a whole new insight on a lot of basketball teams, players. And the what-ifs are very interesting. Uh, there's a couple ones like... There was Bill Simmons came up with some crazy scenario where the 2009 finals was Celtics Lakers, where Paul Pierce and like Kevin Garnett are on the Lakers and Pau Gasol and Kobe are on the Celtics. It's pretty crazy. It involved like KG not being traded and then like the Celtics going after Pau Gasol and then trading like Paul Pierce and three picks for Kobe or something and then the Lakers signing KG in the off season instead of him being traded. It, it was nuts. Um, it's it's really a cool book. So if you guys are really interested in basketball, I suggest go checking it out. I'm about 150 pages in right now, and I'm enjoying every single page of it. Bill Simmons is very knowledgeable about the game of basketball, and like I said before, he's one of my favorite sports writers. So really uh, looking forward to continuing to read that book. But Dwight Howard going to work in the post there on his former teammate Greg Monroe, who is the starting center for this team, not the power forward that uh, I like him as more. I don't. I don't think he fits in as center. I think if you run him at a center, you're running at an under undersized team. I like him with the power forward more, even though I think he's six ten or six eleven. But he's just his body isn't really built as a center. Uh, he doesn't play like a center. He plays like more of a finesse forward, kind of stretch the floor a little bit, which you don't see from centers very often. But Shabazz Muhammad going to work right now on Tyrus Thomas. That was a huge mismatch, and Muhammad's going to get the hook shot to go. So good to see Muhammad. Uh, getting, getting to work here, I, I think I put him in the starting lineup this game over Iman Shumpert just because 
I, you know, I had to get his, you know, I had to get his morale up. So I, I changed Muhammad to a starter, changed Shumpert to a six man. That quickly would not work though. Uh, Shumpert became a little bit upset after that, and um, you'll see soon uh, whether or not we trade him. But anyway, we're going to the half up by 453 to 49, and now Kemba Walker bringing the ball up. He's going to give it to Brandon Rush for a three. Brandon Rush, man, he's such a good shooter. It'd, it'd be cool to get him on, on the team one day. I think that'd be uh, neat. But anyway, you can see I'm making subs there towards the end of the play. But 55 to 54, Shumpert is going to give the ball to Brandon Knight, and Knight is going to get that three to go. So. We go back up by four now, 58 to 56. Now Muhammad brings up the ball. This is what he can do a little bit. Bring the ball up the court, make some plays, finds a cutting Thomas Robinson. And Robinson, who had been quiet up to this point, is going to get the easy dunk there. So Kid Gilgers with the ball gives it to Tyrus Thomas. He's going to kick it out to Kemba. And Kemba, man, I don't know why he was hitting all these threes on us. Kemba's really not that good of a three-point shooter in real life, actually. I think he shot, he his a career like 37 and what am I saying? It's like a career 30 something percent there in college and in, in this rookie season for the Bobcats. So it's really not that good of a three point shooter, but he's hitting him today. And you can see I'm hitting Melo on the break, and Melo's going to pull up for three right there. Melo didn't have his biggest game, uh, but he really made the plays when we need to. By putting Muhammad in the starting lineup, Melo didn't need to make as many plays as he usually does, which is interesting. So that's kind of a. I don't know, it's an interesting. I don't, I don't know what that means for the team. Um, whether that's a good thing or a bad thing, but certainly uh, we'll need Melo to uh, pick up his play, obviously, if, if we make a run in the playoffs, just because Muhammad's kind of a still a young guy, uh, only had one playoff run so far. So, but you see, Melo is really starting to pick it up now. He's got 22, make that, tw or make he had 21, make that 23. After that two-handed slam right there, we're up by five. Melo with the ball it gives it to Howard. Howard's going to go to work on Kemba Walker in the post. That was an easy mismatch to recognize, and Howard's going to get that one to go. He's got 16 and nine. Howard had a really big game today. I really took advantage of him being covered by Greg Monroe, who, although he's a good defender, I just didn't think he could cover, uh, you know, a really prototypical center in Dwight Howard in terms of just build and body and stuff. So he really took advantage of that mismatch. And Monroe was going to work on Howard, though. Look at the nice finesse post moves. That's what I'm talking about. I really feel like you see that more out of a power forward than you do out of a center. I just think he matches up as a center much better than he does as a power forward. Brandon Knight is going to create space, pull up for three, and get that one to go. Gives us a four-point lead once again. The Bobcats were hanging around. Two-point game once again now. Lamar Odom with the ball. Lamar Odom's going to take the kind of like fadeaway slash like dribble pull up three and get that to go. That was his first point of the game. Very nice to see there. Now, Kid Gilchrist with the ball. Marion covering him. And he's going to beat Marion off the dribble and end up getting the and one. That was pretty impressive right there to Michael Kid Gilchrist. Uh, you know, this is, this is year three, Michael Kid Gilchrist. So certainly developed a little bit. But Brandon Knight to the hoop. Don't forget his dunking ability. He can do that sometimes. He uh, doesn't do it too often, but when he gets into the lane, he often will uh, get up there and slam it down. So good dunk there by Brandon Knight. And, uh, I, you know, based off of the uh, of what you guys said, what was it, two videos ago? about Or no, it was yeah, last video. What am I saying? About uh, whether or not I should trade Brandon Knight. I, I'm definitely not going to trade him. Uh, I'm going to keep him throughout the year and then probably try to re-sign him. Maybe use the early bird rights or whatever it's called. Uh, which is like I have if I've had him for th over three years on my team I can go a little bit over the salary cap to sign him So we'll see what kind of contract he uh, asked for in the offseason if not we have um, a few first-round picks stocked up and We can certainly uh, either trade for a superstar point guard to go after one in the draft if We go after one in the draft it'd be much cheaper, but we'll see what happens I'm not really too sure who's in the draft class this year So mellow to the hoop Gets the easy dunk. We go up by seven now a nine-point game Thomas is going to miss the two Howard on the boards and really uh, about time to ice this game. Mello's going to pull up for three, and that's the dagger. We go up by 12, and we're going to end up winning this game 109-100. to 100. As you see, Aaron Kraft dribbles the clock out right there. So we end up beating our former, former, you know, what was it? Uh, what was I going to call him? Centerpiece, Greg Monroe. So very big win for the Pistons. Uh, we improved to 28-8 on the year. First in the Eastern Conference. I believe the Bobcats entered this game about 6th or 7th, I want to say. So good win for us uh, we know we can beat these type of teams and it was a good job beating them and uh yes that's really all i have to say on this you guys are going to see the player of the game highlights as well as the stats as we exit the game you'll see that um team stats wise we beat them in a lot of categories not all of them we didn't we certainly did not dominate this team the bobcats uh very resilient hung around for a while much like a george carl, carl coach team would but Really, Melo and Howard coming up big for us, and Muhammad had a nice all-around game as well, but Howard was definitely uh, 
definitely deserved the player of the game. He had like 20 something and 11, I believe, in a few blocks. So it was good to see out of him. And as for the rest of our role players, you saw typical games out of them. But Campbell Walker had 19 points and 14 assists. That was really good to see out of him. He's clearly developed into a nice point guard. So anyway, that's going to wrap up this video. So I thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoy. And so I'm out. Peace.